What's going on everyone? This is going to be my first episode of my tips. And we're going to do putting today. So I'm here in my backyard. We have this lovely Axiom Pro basket that you guys are gonna, you guys are just gonna see that basket a ton because I'm stuck here and then uh, in my backfield through the woods making these videos. So let's just start up and give you guys some mental aspects I think about when I'm putting. Uh, first things first, I actually putt different than most people in a sense of where I aim. Let's just, uh, let's just examine the basket here for a second. So your normal right-handed player is going to aim somewhere, you know, I'd say between these two links of chains. Some people aim at the pole too, it's not that uncommon. Uh, it, and typically, people tell you you want to find one link in the chains, or one link of chain rather, and you're going to aim at that. Uh, I have nothing wrong with that. I think that's a great idea. Uh, where I find it to be kind of different is my the link that I aim at. So when I'm looking at the basket, I like right here more so than over here. Uh, reason being, when I grip lock my putter I tend to pull it out and I'll get these like wide catches and they'll pull in I'm trying to eliminate that as much as possible so I'm trying to tighten up my stance so then I'll aim here and then when I grip lock it it pulls there and it's in a really good spot still another thing I found uh, when putting it like chain stars or uh, Chain stars or Mach 3s, Mach 5s, they all tend to catch a little bit better right here. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not hitting it weak where I'm going to push out like AM side putt because it is an AM side putt technically. But I'm looking at it as if I hit here, it's, it pulls in and comes back because I'm hitting it into the center. I tend to have a lot more success aiming right there. Even on Mach X's, another good example. So Mach X's, you're able to slam the putter hard in the center, but it doesn't catch well on the sides. If you hit center left, it catches more that I found out than like outside right. So once again, if I happen to fall out, you know, and I'm, I, oops, I grip locked it. I'm pulling there and I'm still hitting mainly center. So it's going to want to stay in most of the time. So that's generally a concept, how I look at baskets. So like I said, chain stars, Mach 3s, Mach 5s, all of those catch a little bit better on the left. So there's my, my general consensus of how I view the basket itself. Another thing that I've also found out is I seem to have better luck when there's a band. Something about that visual, visualization for me just helps me hit where I want to hit. Whatever you can do in your putt to make yourself not miss left or right um, it is for the best. Of course, missing left or right is maybe okay in some situations, but generally it's gonna be frowned upon. The situation where I find it most acceptable to miss left or right is if you're, uh, let me just give you an example real quick. Let's say that the, the fence behind the basket, which is maybe 12 feet behind is OB, and I have to make this putt in some severe tailwind. So I have to make this putt or run it. Let's say I would, you know, I'm gonna play it wide like that so it comes in. The tailwind isn't gonna let it fade so it's not the best example right now, but even though it wasn't allowed to fade, just picture that with no wind, it would swoop across the basket and give me kind of a safer run from far. This isn't necessarily that, I mean, I'm 30, 35 feet. So for me, I'm not really worried about blowing past at this range and I'm pretty confident I'm gonna hit some kind of metal. But for some people, it might be 20 feet. For some people, it might be 50 where you don't wanna run it too hard and go be behind it. So you're gonna play more of a half go or a hyzer run at it. Uh, and, to segue into my, my next point, I am not a big fan of half runs. I think if I'm really gonna go for a putt, I'm absolutely gonna go for it. Um, if I do half run, it will look similar to this. So let's say this putt worries me a bit. So I my half run would be like that. Uh, but like I said, that's just an example from this range, I'm gonna go for it almost all the time unless I, I, it's it's like literally maybe 80 20 go for it not go for it and that's just how my brain works there's also a lot of tailwind here so i could really go for this aggressively and put it nice and high see 
I caught metal and I didn't go B. And it's also with me holding a camera in my hand. So it's not gonna be in an exact replica of what I'm what I'm really doing. So let's just talk about other common practices that I have. Uh, I'll quickly go over three quickly go over three good things that I found to help my putting. Don't practice putting for 40 feet every single time. And don't just come out and just be like, all right, yeah, I gotta practice these 50 footers without warming up any of your shorter putts. Uh, I probably was like Dana Vici or something. Uh, he actually bought my first disc from him. Uh, he influenced my game a lot, I looked up to him. I aspired to get to a high level because of him. And I got here uh, just from a lot of practice and a lot of uh, tribulation to disc golf itself. So what he, I remember saying to me like 10 years ago, he was saying don't practice, he doesn't practice putting outside the circle. I don't know if he still lives by that or if, it, I'm almost positive it was him, but I took that aspect and put it in my game and it really, really helped a lot. So what I'll do is come to the basket, I'll walk like six or seven steps away, no more than nine steps because you're flirting with that you know, 27, 30 foot range when you're nine steps away. Just practice there, get comfortable. If you're good there during the round, you just dig a little bit deeper inside your inside your core and in your reach, and you'll be hitting those longer putts online too. footers are really going to tell you things uh yeah i missed one and i missed it because i simply went too fast through my pull through so over time you'll begin to realize what really affects your putt and what causes certain misses to happen uh let me move this behind me and i'll kind of show you a couple of situations all right let's go over some some things that'll happen when i'm putting that certain ways so first of all let's go over um when i'm not when I'm a little bit quick on my release. So what'll happen when I'm quick? Perfect example. It's just gonna come off left like that. And then obviously the same problem on the right side, I'll be a little more forgiving, but I'm also aiming, keep in mind, I'm gonna aim at my normal spot. So let's hold on a little too long here. Didn't do that correctly. So that's what my putts look like if I grip lock them. I'm kind of exposing myself in my falls right now. Uh, if, if you've watched me in coverage, I definitely have got my fair share of those far right side catches. Those are mistakes for me, unless it's far, like I, I talked about earlier. But generally, if I'm hitting on that far right side, I'm not on, my, I'm not on point today, or that day, rather. Uh, if I'm leaning too far forward, I tend to hit the cage that uh, and if I'm leaning too far back I might accidentally let the wind get it I'm floating in tailwind so it's kind of helping me uh, with that one uh, and then generally that's gonna be my only mistake uh, sometimes I'll hit the pole and come back out but I normally don't put you know hard hard and this basket caught that really nicely but I also hit it a chain length off left where I like to so it gave it a nice cushion there to catch it And there's a non-organic mess up. Uh, or technically, I guess that would be organic. It was a non-staged uh, mess up. So there's a little bit into how, how I practice it uh, a majority of the time. All right, we have this lovely chair here. So I am, am I'm not that good of a straddle putter. Uh, I'll be the first to admit it. I'm a little bit shameful. I make a lot of my shadow putts, but I'd say definitely lack about 20% more makes than I should with straddle. That, that's just a, just a guess. Moral of the story, my straddle putting is, uh, is not as good as my, as my normal putting.
so as far as my shadow putting goes, you're gonna see my misses be a little bit different. Uh, with my shadow putts, I don't use so much wrist action. I try to just raise up my body all in one release. I've also grown to really enjoy shroud putting off of my right leg. So as far as my stance goes here, let me put this down. All right, I'll stand a little bit further back so you can see. I'm gonna stand right here and I'm gonna try to put my balance to where my body feels like I'm really level across the plane here. So when I'm level, I'll kind of reach down, pull up, and so on. Reach down, pull up. Uh, just, just taking that bit more time to make sure your body weight is where you want it and where it should be, it's gonna increase your putting percentage a lot. So just take that extra time. Um, some people putt without, you know, because they don't like to think they putt really quick. I'm not one to get in my own head personally uh, when I'm trying to focus. That extra bit of time and the extra bit of pressure actually fuels me. So I look at it a little differently. It's like if I need to make a putt to win, you know, I'm not going to just take it and just zip it quick. There was that pole spit out. No, I'm going to sit here, just think about it, you know. Look down for a second, maybe re reset, come through slow, put it in. If you can teach yourself how to be more, um, use more rhythm and putt slower, uh, sl slower swing necessarily, you don't have to take your 30 seconds every time. Just get yourself and your tempo very, very organized so you're not necessarily rushing yourself at all. Chris Dickerson is a very good putter. He does the same thing every single time and it works to him for him just flawlessly. But then you have people, uh, Eagle McMahon, for example, I feel didn't have so much of a, of a ritual. He just kind of, uh, he kind of gets himself where he needs to get smooth pull through. His stroke is about the same every time and he makes a lot of putts. I think it's more or less that, you know, the, the last like, 10 seconds or so of your uh, routine or however you just get ready for putting is going to dictate a lot and to me personally i've realized that's tempo and it's just mainly tempo after you get all the other stuff figured out the muscle memories the tempo is going to be very very important even when i'm practicing putting, if i'm seriously about to be in a tournament or if i'm practicing for a tournament round i'm not going to zip them quick i'm going to take my time and put them in now when I'm practicing putting in the yard, I find nothing wrong with just kind of swinging like this. Just get, getting your arm, you know, kind of figured out where you need it to be. But then when it actually matters, that muscle memory uh, combined with the tournament preparation, uh, stroke awareness and, and tempo is going to make you a very good putter. The last thing I'm going to do for you guys, I'm just going to give you a side view of my putt. In a tournament, um, let's pretend we're in a tournament situation here. I'm gonna give you a side view of my putt from 10 to 40 feet, just so you can see the tempo. So there's not gonna be any fast forwarding, anything like that. It's gonna, just gonna be straight up how I would do it. That has been my putting tutorial slash tip slash whatever you want to take it as video. I hope this has been insightful for uh, for you guys and I hope you can learn a thing or two from it. Um, this, man, I want to go play disc golf so bad at a course, but I just know it's not the right thing to do. So I'm going to stay at home. Uh, 
I've been doing lots of fishing at a private lake. Fishing, disc golf, video editing. I think I'm gonna try to get you guys uh, two or three videos a week. I'm gonna try to bump it up just as long as I can get interesting content. <sighs> as always, thanks to my sponsors, MVP, Plastic Addicts, Paragon. Hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of my tips videos. Thanks for watching as always. Please subscribe if you haven't. Next giveaway should be in, currently I think it's 27 members or 27 subscribers away. Uh, I'll try to find something cool to give away at, at, at 200, but thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.